All right, guys, we're going to be working on the idea of lists, kind of where we've been uh, for a week or so. Going to do a few more things with lists. We're going to have a list assignment. So the very first list we're going to do is going to be a list of turtles. A list can be anything, not just names or numbers. It can be any kind of data. Get rid of that. So if we remember, the, the way that you declare a list, and you don't have to type this, is something like this. That's an empty list in which you can append things to it, like that. Like I said, don't type that because we're about to delete it. Or you can declare a list by putting data items between those square braces. You know, like that, or, or names within quotes or whatever. So what we're going to do is we're going to make four turtles, put them in a list. And we also want to set some starting directions for the turtles so that they don't all go start off going the same way. And lastly, we want to set some colors for the turtles. So we're going to need three lists, I think. Let's call one C for colors. Red. comma, green, comma, blue. We want one of them to start off at zero, which is going due east. We want one of them to go off 120 degrees like that, and the other one to go 240 degrees like that, so that they go like in three different directions of a triangle. So D for directions, is equal to 0, 120, 240. Now we need three turtles. I should have put import turtle up at the top, but I'm just going to put it here instead. Import turtle. T1 is equal to turtle dot capital T turtle parentheses. You may as well just copy that and paste it and change it to T2 and T3. Now we have three turtles. So we're going to make a list of turtles. Alrighty, so... Let's call our turtles gang. They're a gang of turtles. Gang is equal to parentheses, excuse me, square brackets, T1, comma, T2, comma, T3. All right, now we have everything we need to do to start our turtles off. So we're going to write a for loop. And we were calling them for each and for in four in range. Well, we're not going to do a range. We're just going to do four each at this point. So, I think this will work. For every T in the gang, for every turtle in the gang, let's set their cur their uh, color. So, T dot color print this. Oops. Okay, I've made a mistake. Delete those two lines. We have to have an index number for this to work. Why? Because we're not only going to be referencing the three turtles, we're also at the same time going to be referencing the three colors and the three directions. So to do that, you have to have an index number so that you, we can do 0, 1, and 2 and have them all correlate. Because the red turtle is going to start off at hitting 0, and that's turtle 1. The green turtle is going to be going off at 120 degrees, and that's T2. The blue turtle going to be going off at 240 degrees in these T3. So we need the index number so that we can unite them all. So for I in range of gang, how many turtles are there in the gang? That'll tell us.
Okay. So we've been using left and right to set their directions, but in this case, let's just do gang I is dot set heading add direction sub I. That's going to set as heading so that turtle 1 will be going 0, turtle 2 will be going 120, and turtle 3 will be going to 240. Now let's set their colors. Gang I dot color. We want his color to be color I. Now from this point on, I think we can get away with using the uh, for each syntax rather than the for in range syntax. Let's try it. For T in gang, let's make each one go forward 100 pixels. Turn right 240 degrees and then draw a circle of radius 90. I have no idea what that's going to look like, but we'll see. So I'm going to save mine and call it gang. It's a gang of turtles. And while I'm here, let's put my name, date, Gang of Turtles program. Uses a list of turtles. That's what our program's doing. And it broke up. It broke. This should have been L-E-N of gang. How many turtles there are. Why don't we just make a new variable here called num turtles is equal to L-E-N of gang. Or maybe I'll just shorten it to num for ease of typing. And then I can do for I in range num. So what is the length of our gang? When we call it L-E-N gang, what is that going to return and store into num? Well, how long is the list? Come on, guys. How many items are in the list? Three. There's three items in the list, so what is LEN going to return? It's going to return three. That's going to be stored in num. So the range statement counts from zero up to, but not including, num. So what's the highest number in the range going to be? Two. Yeah, it's going to be two. 0, 1, and 2. That's turtle at index 0, that's turtle at index 1, that's turtle at index 2. And we declared all three of these to have the same number of items. If it didn't, it would kind of break down. That's the idea of parallel arrays. Parallel arrays, I was going to just add a comment down here, equal lists or they could be called parallel lists. Sorry, I'm going to change that to word lists. Array is a C++ in Java term. Are lists of equal length where the items are linked by their index number. So that's index number zero. We have a red turtle going at zero degrees. We have a green turtle going at 120 at index one. Index two is a blue turtle at 240. Kind of neat. 
So you see what's happening is instead of just having a gang of, excuse me, a list of words to print through or a list of numbers or add, we have, some, we have more complex objects that are being stored in the list. And any kind of data that you can create in uh, Python can be added to a list. Once you get this working, write one more loop that looks like this. It has another three or four commands. It doesn't really matter what they are. You make them up. Turning left, turning right, going forward, drawing another square, whatever you want. Just to be fancy, I'm going to use another loop to make mine draw a square. I want y'all to do something else, but... A square has four sides, so I'm going to count from zero to three. And then my turtle's going to go right 90 degrees. And then he's going to go forward a certain dis distance. Maybe a hundred. If we combine this with our other program, where we could give them lists of commands, that would be more fun. <laughs> Nifty enough. Alright, that's really about enough. Give y'all another minute to come up with the... Uh, Things that yours are doing here, they don't have to be as fancy as using a four loop to draw a square. speed up our turtles a little bit. We could do it in this loop, we could do it in this loop, but we have to speed up the turtle for each turtle, not just once. And this will be the last change we make to them. So I think right here, after I set their heading and their color, I'm just going to do gang sub i dot speed and set the speed to no delay. You. That's our new line there. Yeah, much better. Or 
if we think that's too fast, we could lower it to A. No, I liked it at 10 better, or at 0. No, zero is where it's at. The rest of them are just, okay. All right, so I think that's embellishment enough, unless we were going to modify it so we could do a list of commands, and I see no reason to do that. We've already done that once, another program. So let's make a new file. And so here we're just going to use lists a little bit more. Kind of reinforcing the idea of range statements and stuff like that. We're going to do it in a slightly different fashion, though. So I'm not coming up with a creative name for this at all, so I'm just going to call this one April 10. My name, my date. So one of the things we need to be able to do sometimes is take input and then to put it in a list. You know, it's kind of boring, it's kind of a drag if they have to type in each number on its own line, or each word on its own line. It'd be cooler if they could type in, you know, an entire sentence and then have that split up. So let's make it do that. Text, well, let's print. Print, enter a sentence, and then text is equal to input. Now we're not going to convert it to a floater in it because we want the words. So we're going to use a function called split. What split does is it will break the sentence up into a list based on what is known as the delimiter. The delimiter is the piece of data that separates each element in the list. So don't type this, but if you had this list, commas are the delimiters. If you have this list, Spaces are the delimiters. So here we go. Words equals text dot split. I'm not going to specify a delimiter. I mean, I guess I could. I could tell it that I want it split on spaces, but that's the default. And then let's print those words out. So enter a sentence. What if I don't want to? And it breaks it up into a list. What if I don't want to? And that list can be accessed just by like any other list now. Words subscript zero would print out what. Words subscript one would be if, whatever. So a while ago, we wrote a program that kind of looked like this, you know, forward one, don't type this. Forward 100, right 90, forward 100, left 45, you know, circle with radius of 90. Except we declared it inside of a list like this, so we had to do a lot of extra rigmarole like that in order to make it work. I'm going to just end it there because that's tedious. Like I said, don't type that. We could have made that just like this you know, without all the extra stuff. And then use the split command to turn it into, you know, the list. That would have been better. 
One reason why is that you could write that stuff out to a file or read it in from a file, you know, just read in a line of text and then process it. So we could have been drawing our shapes based on lines of commands in a file. So that's the idea behind the split command. Let's make another one. Print, enter a series of ages. Text is equal to input. Ages is equal to text dot split. And print the ages. Now in this case it's not going to be perfect because the ages are still going to be strings, they're not going to be ints. We'd have to figure out a way to fix that in order to continue processing these numbers. And there we go. So we typed in a string and it converted it into a, uh, a list of numbers, or actually a list of strings that contain numbers. You don't have to do that in input. Let's make one more that's a list of colors. Red, blue, green, yellow, orange. And then colors is equal to text.split. And now let's print those out like this, print out all the colors, but let's also print them out one per line using a for each loop. So for C in colors, print C. So the third one is an input from the uh, from the screen. We didn't type it in. The colors were already you know coded directly into the program, but that's fine. That's what split does. How do we check to see if a specific color is in that list? Print. What color should we check? Check is equal to input. Now let's see if that is in there. If check in, I N, colors, colon, print, yes it is, else, colon, print. No, it is not. So we're just checking to see if whatever they type in is in our color list. Now, obviously, we will know just by looking, you know, we print the color list before, but this is just a check. So I'm going to type in orange, and it should tell me that it is in the list. And then if I ran it again and typed in a color that wasn't in the list, like gold, it should say, no, it is not. I'm just typing one word sentences and one number, so it won't take very long. All right, now I'm going to look for gold, and it says, no, it is not. So this syntax here, if in is how you check to see if one item is in a list. Let's start making some comments down here at the bottom. To check to see if an item is in a list, you use the in keyword. If 23 in ages, you know, like that. That would tell us whether 23 was in the list of ages or not. Except the ages is a list of strings, but not numbers yet. But that's the idea. If 
red in colors, things like that. What if we want to remove one of the items in the list? Let's remove the first and the last items from the list. No. Instead, why don't we just remove a specific color? So if that color is in the list, we're going to delete it. If check is in colors, check is equal to the color we want to do, c.remove check. And then we're going to print, but now it's not. And we're going to print the list again. Excuse me, it's not c.remove. The name of our list is colors. So, sorry about that. Change that line and then print the colors list again. I did not mean to close my file. So, file open recent files. There we go. Okay. I'm going to try it again. Inner sentence, hello. Inner series of net ages, 12. What color should we check? I'm going to look for yellow. Yes, yellow is in the list, but now it's not. And it prints out the list to show us that yellow is no longer in the list. That should have been, but now it's not. Not, but not, it's not. Okay, so that's going to be our next note. To remove a specific item, or value, I guess I should say, from the list, use the remove function. Colors.remove red, like that. Notice my, sin, my uh, choice of words here. N is not a function. Why? Everything that's a function has got parentheses after it. N does not have parentheses after it. Neither does if. They're both colored orange. What are those things called? <laughs> Look at this sentence. It'll give you the answer. What did I call the N word? That sounds bad. What is that? Keyword, yeah. So the words that are highlighted in orange here are keywords. They're not functions. So what are the functions here? What colors are they colored? Everything with the parentheses. Well, the built-in functions are colored purple, which is cool. However, the functions that aren't built into the language aren't colored purple. But still, they're the things with parentheses. So remove is also a function. Remove is a function that's attached to a piece of data, to this list, so it's got a more technical name, a method. A method is just a function, but it's a function that's attached to a piece of data. All right, anybody getting syntax errors? Just a sec. So here's the code we added. We added dot add so that if the color wasn't in the list, it is now. And then we tried out replace, which will replace everything that's listed in the, in the, as the first argument with everything that's listed as the second argument. So type a sentence, hi, inner series of ages zero. Now it wants a word. What color should we check? I'm going to type in gold because I know gold is not in the list. 
and it blows up. You know what? It's not add. It's append. I knew that. I said that down here, and then I typed that in anyways. Okay. On the exam, I'm not going to make you pick between add and append as being the correct words, because I messed it up, so fix this. That should now be a append. Run it again. And the list has no attribute replace. Okay then. We're going to ignore replace for now. We're going to go hit our online page here. So list values, we know how to specify list values now. Square braces, if you don't put anything behind that, inside the braces it just creates an empty list. If you're going to put things into that list, after that you start better calling dot append. We know how to access elements. If you want to just print out one version of the list, you do that. So we have a list called numbers. That would get the first one. What happens if you use a negative one as the index? Yeah, you get the last one. You can print out the list. This. Yeah, I'm not going to even mention that one. This is effectively a for in range, except they didn't use the word range. They just used a list of numbers. Don't know why. That's better like that. For I in range, the length of the horseman list, that would print out all the horsemen. To check to see if something is in a list, you use the IN keyword. Or you can use NOT IN. If debauchery is not in horsemen, that would prove that there is no horsemen of debauchery. Just war, famine, and pestilence, etc. You can add two lists together with the plus sign. The sillier one is the multiply. If you have a list and then you do list times four, it would repeat that list four times in a row. We know what slices are. Slices are when you use a pair of numbers between the square brackets with a colon. If you leave off the first number, what does it assume that is? If I said, if this was my series of numbers, and then I said A underscore list colon 4, what's that going to get me? Since no number is specified there, it assumes it's a 0. So it would get elements 0, 1, 2, and 3. Just like the range statement, the upper number is one past the limit. So one to three here means start at one and go up to but not including three. Well, that's element one. That's element two. We're going to go up to but not including three, so it's going to print out B and C. Here we go. Colon four. So what does the colon mean? Where does it start? Yeah, it starts at zero, so it gets all of them. My quick and easy way of figuring out how long the list should be is just to take the difference between the two. Three minus one is a list of, is a length of two. So starting at element one and going to two is B C. Starting at element four, excuse me, starting at element zero and the difference between zero and four is four. It's going to be a, a length of four. If you do not specify the last number, it goes to the end of the list. So this would start at index 3 and go to the end of the list. So that's 0, 1, 2, 3. So that would give us D, E, and F. And lastly, if you don't put a number in either as the beginning or the end, it gives you the entire list. That's actually called cloning the list. Sometimes you want to make a copy of the list and then start doing stuff to it without modifying the original. And I'll show you what I mean. Let's go back to our code.
Replace didn't work, so I'm just going to comment that out. Pardon me? Okay. Okay. It is for strings. That's interesting. Okay. So, ooh, what was I just about to do? Oh, yeah. Clone the list. We're going to make a... We're going to clone the colors list. I'm just going to call it colors2 because I'm not very creative at the moment. Colors2 is equal to colors starting at the beginning and going all the way to the end. Now I'm going to add some colors to colors2. So colors2.append, let's add on a gold, well, and silver copper, all these metallic-y looking colors. Now print out colors. So print colors, whoops, let's print a name of the string first. Colors followed by the name of the list itself and then print quote colors to comma colors to. And we should see that we made a copy of the list but only modified the copy and not the original. Oh, a pin takes exactly one argument. Alrighty. Well, fine. Change it like that. Comment out the rest of it. Just add gold. If I gave it a list, though, it would, would have worked. Okay, so now if I look at it, my last color is going to be gold, but only on colors too. Why does that matter? Because you could do something like this and you would think you were making a copy, but you were not. Watch this. Colors 3 is equal to colors. Great, now I have a copy of my list. I can start making changes to it. So, Colors 3 dot remove, what's one of our colors? Yeah, green. Let's remove green. And now do the same thing we did here, except print out colors and colors 3. So I'm just going to highlight those two lines, copy them, paste them. And we're going to see that green is removed both from colors 3, what we thought was a copy of the list, and colors, the original list. Oh, I accidentally Forgot to change that one. If you do the copy paste thing, make sure that you change both twos to threes. I was becoming irate for a moment. So if we looked at it, when we appended gold to it, it appended it to both the original and the copy. But when we removed green, green disappeared from both the original and the copy. And why is that? It's because the copy is not a copy of the list. It's what's known as an alias. Just like Clark Kent is the alias of Superman or vice versa. Two different names, but meaning the same thing. Just like having two signs that point to the same store. You know, you have two signs that point to the same store and then you go and you paint the store red. Well, they're both now pointing towards a red sign. A, a red store. So we have two variables pointing to the same list, both colors three and colors, 
are pointing to the same list. So if we add green, we remove green from one of them, well, they're both pointing to the same one. So it's gone for both references. That's called an alias in this language. In other uh, languages, such as Java, it's known as a reference. And in C++, it's known as a pointer. Same idea. You have multiple things pointing to the same thing. So we're going to add a few more comments down here at the bottom. To make an alias of a list, use the equal or do list1 is equal to list2. To make a clone of a list, do L1 is equal to L2, but then use a slice going from the very beginning to the very end. If you don't want that cloned list to contain the entire list, you can put numbers in here. You know, you could say, I want elements 3 through 6, so just put 3 and 6 in there. And then your second list would only contain those items. kind of mess those numbers up. I wish it had said L2 is equal to L1, implying that L1 was the original, but I'm not going to go back and fix that. How long is that cloned list? How many elements is that going to return? It's kind of like a range, a range statement. So um, We've talked about this before. What's the first element specified? The starting point. What's the second element specified? One past the end point. How do you get the length in your mind? What do you do? Somebody know and just not say? Or am I asking the question in a confusing way? When I print out L1, how many items are going to be in the L1 list? Two, right, because you just take the difference of the two. That tells you how many items are in the list, in the new list. So four minus two is equal to two. If I did list one, goal and 10, how many items would be in that list? There'd be nine. Yep. All right. I want more people to say this time. If you start at 10 and you go to 22, how many items are going to be in that list? 12. 12. Okay. Okay. We got, we get the idea. Oh my, I went longer than I meant to. I wanted to do one more piece of homework. Excuse me, I wanted to do one more uh, in class and then base the homework on that, but we only have 10 minutes to do it. I guess we will cover it on Wednesday, but I'll tell you what I want to cover. The idea of parallel lists, and I already told you a parallel list is when you have two lists of equal length that are linked by their index number. So like you could do this, names and grades. Joe has a grade of an A. Bob has a grade of a B. Beth has a grade of an A. Jill has a grade of a C, and so on. So if this is a list, all by its lonesome. What's this guy's index number? He's the first item in the list, so his index number is? Zero. Zero, so that makes this one, two, and three. This grades is a separate list. The first item in this one is a zero, one, two, and three. So these are linked by their index number. Joe made an A. You can make as many parallel lists as you want. Joe's last name, you know. Joe's age. 
Joe's favorite color, and so on. And then Bob's age, and Bob's favorite color, and so on. That's the idea behind parallel lists. I'm going to go ahead and post the homework assignment, but I'm not going to make it due you know, a week from today. It's going to be due a week from uh, you know, Wednesday, just in case anybody wants to go ahead and look at it. All righty, on Wednesday, we will cover uh, the material that's going to be on the exam for the following week on Monday. It's going to be over the stuff that we covered since the first exam, which is mostly lists. But there will be some back, cop, um, back covering as well, you know, covering the material from the previous one because I don't want to give an entire exam over just one topic. Are there any questions? Let's make a Dropbox for this. Whew. I made a mistake here. This should have been cities is equal to so there was a typo on that line with cities. I forgot the equal sign. And there we go. So Bob is 30, lives in Tulsa. Beth is 40, lives in Austin. Becky is 25, lives in Oklahoma City. Billy's 21 and lives in New York. So it's your last thing. Come up with one more idea for a column. I don't care what you put. Favorite food, favorite pet. IQ, whatever. And so just make that list here. Add a list here. Add a list with four elements here. And then add it here as well. And once that works, go ahead and upload all three of the scripts we wrote today to the Dropbox.